What inspires me? The Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past. This, um, I, I finally got this in the mail, and, and this is a big piece of history right here. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, in, I would say, early 90s, whenever, when, when the Super Nintendo came out, um, Nintendo Power had, for a year, a collection of comics which I don't know if if they originated from Japan or they were made specifically spe, uh, specifically for Nintendo Power, which I highly doubt. Um, but these comics were translated and brought over to the U.S. in these Nintendo Power issues. And one of them was Super Mario Adventures, which I'll talk about later. And the other one was The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. And this is a reprinting thanks to Viz, uh, Viz Media uh, that seriously should have been done sooner but um, luckily I, I have uh, the issues that have the comics in them and for a time that they they did also uh, make collections of the comics individually in in the in sort of like the in sort of like the uh, size and style of the strategy guides, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get those in time uh, for myself. Um, so um, unfortunately I was not able to get those collections, and they're probably <laughs> really really expensive by now. The original ones, um, but thankfully uh, Viz Media and Nintendo finally decided to reprint the entirety of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Those comics um, made by Shotaro Ishinomori, whom you may know as the guy who made Cyborg 009. Um, his, for a while I thought this was um, Osamu Tezuka who made Astro Boy, but um, their styles are fairly similar. Um, I'm not. Sh I, I'm sure they knew each other uh, or something, um, because honestly, I, or hopefully, they had a lot of respect for each other because you know they they certainly had very similar styles, and they were both fantastic artists, uh, and they made lots of comics in their years, so uh, that should be commendable in itself. I when growing up, I wasn't that into this comic. Um, because the other comic, Super Mario Adventures, I really enjoyed that comic. I, I mean, I was so into that, I, I started drawing the characters like that comic, and, uh, just trying to come up with my own little stories in, in that style, and it was just, like, really, insp it, it was an inspiration. Um, and, to be fair, I liked The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past comics, because they were really... The story does not really follow that much of the actual game. It kind of follows its own story. And it's credited here that Shotaro Ishinomori did the story and the artwork. And he took inspiration from the game. And Nintendo, at the time... This was at the time, gave this artist free range to come up with a uh, interpretation of that of that video game and make it into a story which is really really thick i mean i i honestly i don't remember it having this many pages this is almost 200 pages this is a really hefty book and it's fantastic um as you read along though yeah you'll notice that it does loosely base itself on the story of uh, A Link to the Past and but it also adds characters to it. It, it kind of like to kind of help the story along it, it sort of uh, Ishinomori took uh, uh, liberties I should say to kind of like come up with his own little characters based in this world and that's what I really really love about this 
is that it, it just not only took the idea of Zelda, but he took it in a way where he made it his own. And Nintendo was like fine with this. Usually they're they're very kind of controlling about how things should be taken. The, I don't. Uh, it, I don't really know about a lot of things um, recently in the past, oh, five, ten years, where they actually allowed an artist to kind of take free range of, uh, of a concept and to not only make it their own, but kind of add to what Nintendo already had. And it, it really does seem like that's a no-no now, because... The established franchises of Mario and Zelda and, and Metroid, uh, all these franchises, they, they all have established concepts to them. And they don't want to stray too far away because I guess that would confuse people. I don't know. It, take, it, take it as it is. Um, this book, though, it's, it's fascinating to me that this even got a reprinting in the first place. Because I, I just, I read this, and it just brings back so many wonderful memories of me um, personally taking a video game itself and disavowing knowledge of the entire story I would come up with my own sort of stories to kind of fit the characters, like Mega Man. Mega Man X. When Mega Man X came out, I went, I made my own little comic, which I'm never going to show. And uh, with all due respect, I don't even think I have it. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'll just I'll talk about that some other time. It, I have a really funny story about it. But uh, yeah, I, I took the idea, not even knowing anything about the games or the characters within. Um, my first playthrough, I was just, I, I came up with my own story for it. Um, so, I, I, in a way, this kind of inspired me to do that. And, you know, just, it was an artistic liberty to kind of take an idea and make it my own. And that's what this clearly is. It was, it was an idea taken from a game and just, like, making it, just just making it something unique, something new, as opposed to uh, going step-by-step step verbatim of the, the whole story of the actual game. Because when you play through it, you do kind of, kind of come up with a story on your own. Um, there is very little, like, uh, dialogue uh, outside of... Um, uh, a couple uh, NPCs and so on. It's been a while since I actually played the game, but what I usually see is like people just running through it through speed runs, and uh, that that will basically destroy the story altogether because you just want to play the game as fast as possible. But yeah, um, when you play through a game, it's like you just kind of come up with the scenarios on your own. Like, uh, say for example, you know when Link meets up with the witch, what kind of story would happen there? In, in the game, it's just kind of like, okay, you have to give this witch a mushroom and she gives you a potion. That's it. Is there something else that you can think of that would happen it, it, between these characters? I mean, now it's kind of like you would have to spell that out. I mean, you would meet the witch, she would give you a story... You would talk back and forth, she would give you a mission to perform, and then you would go and perform that mission. And then you would come back, and there that that's the end of it. That's the end of the story there. I, I would like to think that maybe there's a little bit more to that. Maybe this witch has, like, a troubled past. Maybe they're not friends at first. Maybe Link has, like, a, a, a bit of a, a quarrel with this witch. And in turn, it's like, you uh, Link finds out that she's not really a bad witch, she just do, wants to be left alone, but then you kind of like have like a feeling. I'm coming up with a scenario right now, off the top of my head. <laughs> what could happen? And, and this book really illustrates that kind of concept. It's like you have the elements of A Link to the Past, what can you do to make that what what can you do to stretch out those ideas and make them something that is not only 
uh, uh, not only different, but interesting. See, that's the whole thing about it. You have to kind of take a mood and an idea uh, uh, of what you want to create out of it. Because the link to the past, the, I mean, when it comes to mood settings, it's kind of all over the place, but you kind of get where it's coming from. It's very, it's kind of serious, very heroic, very, uh, very um, no-nonsense sort of thing. There's very little humor in it, but when there is humor, it's like in small doses, and it's, it, you know, it, it lightens up the mood to a very uh, dark surrounding. And, and it's really, it's a hero's tale. It's like, save the princess, uh, get the sword, defeat the evil monster. That is as simplistic as you can get. This kind of just takes that and and makes it into something bigger than what it really is. This is a book that, while I w will show some uh, some pages of it, this has to be experienced on your own. Why? Because I want this book to really be experienced. It is a fantastic read. And I also want Viz Media to know that it has to not stop here. There is also the Super Mario Adventures comic that was on the side of this. Um, those Mario and Wario comics that were afterwards. Uh, there was also a Metroid comic and also a Star Fox comic. And I seriously, I seriously am begging, begging Viz Media. And, and please, if you can... Contact someone at Viz Media if you can. Tell them that these comics need to be republished. They need to be known because this is something that Nintendo needs. It not only is a piece of history, but it's something that I feel needs to be experienced for people today to understand this is what we can do with video games. This is something that should be done more with video games. We can make we should be able to make comics about video games that we love and make our own stories to it. Now, I know not every story is going to be great, and some people are going to have very weird views of where something should be taken, but that's what's interesting about it. Throughout, you know, the history, there, there have been so many stories told, and they're based off of something else, why can't we do that still for video games? I, I'm sure somewhere there's a there's some person out there with a great idea for uh, a comic about something um, based on a video game, and it's not so much it's it shouldn't be considered unoriginal to do that. It it is it is great to make your own stuff, um, but uh, really what I would love to see more of is an original take from a famous artist that is known to make great comics to come up with a story and uh, and world based on something that has already been established. Because we see it all the time in movies. You take something like a, a property... Like, I'm, I'm, I apologize. You take something from a property um, that has already been established, and you take another director or artist or writer or something, and they have their own view and take on it. And people who have not had their uh, movies made, they have ideas for it too. And that has to be seen. So, really, what I'm really stressing here is like, I would love to see more comics like this brought back to light thanks to Viz Media. And it, 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 this is like, this is like a holy grail <laughs> to someone like me because it, I never would have thought that they would republish something like this. And seeing it right now in front of me is one of the greatest experiences that I am so thankful to have. And I would love it if uh, you out there would uh, take the time to read it yourself. How... Take a book, read a book. It's Reading Rainbow. It, whatever. Please, please, please do what you can to support Viz Media in making more of these. Because uh, that's what we need. We need a little bit more creativity and a little less of the same. 
Um, if this really inspired you, please be sure to share, like, subscribe. Uh, if you have your experiences with comics like this in the past, please uh, talk about your experiences in the comments below. And please be excellent to each other. I will see you in the next inspiration.